Hey. Hello, everyone. So I am Vajan, Vajan Chamundi. I have come all the way from India to here uh, to show off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've come all the way here to show off some of the work we do with Blender at our studio and uh, just take you through a small story, uh, I guess, of uh, how we use Blender in all aspects of filmmaking. So let's, let's begin. So who all here are from the film industry, like work? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, uh, so we are two companies, Do and Rumble. So uh, Do is our film production house, and Rumble is our post house. So Do does all the shooting and the set and everything, and then they give it to us, and then we, you know, make it all pretty and give it back to them. <laughs> so this is film production. I guess uh, you must have seen this kind of basic breakdown of what film production is. There's a pre-production phase, a production phase, and a post-production phase. So we're going to see how we use Blender in all these aspects uh, to solve issues that just come from uh, how filmmaking generally is. Like you know, it's 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 like such a a massive uh, uh, it's like a massive event. Like everyone has to come together to make this film happen. And uh, when people come together, sometimes problems come here and there, and uh, we try to figure out how to fix it. So so let's just start with uh, how we got into Blender in the first place. So that is in pre-production. So making of a set. So for ads and uh, some short films, we tend to use, you, we make sets, uh, obviously. And uh, this is some of our team working on our sets. You can see some of them here, right here. So uh, whenever we used to make these sets, we, it, it, was like, it was a vague process where there was a lot going on before uh, we see the final set happening. And it was kind of hard to convey the message, like, hey, this is how the set is going to look in the end. So we decided, like, uh, why don't we just do this in 3D? Like, why don't, we, uh, why don't we visualize it in 3D and show it to the clients so they don't have to go through the mental process of, hey, okay, is this how it's going to look? What's the color going to be? How's the light going to be? So um, this is what we used to have before. So we would have a color palette, and then we would have, hey, these are the props. Hey, look, that's a cat drawing. Hey, maybe it'll look like this, the lighting. And then you're trying to explain all of this, and it suddenly looks like a YouTube thumbnail that's like all clickbaity. <laughs> and uh, so we came up with a simple solution. So what we do is we get these CAD drawings from our set designers, and uh, we take them into Blender and do the thing, extrude, uh, and all that beautiful stuff. And uh, so I'll just show you some of the process. So here we can see that you know we can play around with the colors, see how it looks right before you know it. Uh, before we make it, and then we use the asset browser and we put uh, uh, we put the assets in place just to see how the blocking and everything's gonna be. So that that is quite a fun process, and especially with denoising and all these days, it's like super fast. So yeah, and this is uh, this is always fun. Like you know, you can you can just see how things are gonna be right before they're made. So yeah, uh, I will move on to a more complete version of this. So you can see here, you do a little fancy bounce animation and just try to impress the clients. <laughs> so we have the set here, and uh, just show you a final render. Yeah. So we have these renders, so we can go directly to the set designer and look, hey, this is what I want. And it's simple as that. And they do their magic, and they make it. So this was the final set. Um, you can see here. So we're on the next. And I'll just show you a couple of this. Yeah, this was an ad film we did. Uh, so yeah, we have the final set. So it's uh, pretty simple like that. This is another film we did called EIA, uh, where it's like a fake news channel. And uh, uh, we have a set that is for news. And uh, so it's, it, it's crazy these days, because uh, me and the set designers have gotten so used to working with each other that whatever I make, it's like they give me the exact same thing. So you can see. I just got the exact same thing. And it's funny because I'm sitting there working, and I'm like, hey, uh, 
that thing looks nice, I'll just copy paste it down and you know, hey, this, I'll just duplicate it and then they do the hard work of sitting and building it <laughs> based on my <laughs> just uh, mental thoughts. So that's always nice. And, and the deadlines and the timelines for these are crazy. Like, uh, we make the set render and two, three days later the set is done. So it's, it's awesome because I'm like rendering and go to sleep and then two days later I walk in and I'm like, hey, I'm sitting in my render. Yeah, nice. <laughs> So, so yeah, th th that's fun. I mean, that's always fun to just walk there and be like, hey, that's, that's my render. I can, I can sit in it now. So, yeah. So this is how we got into Blender in the first place, just trying it with uh, pre-production, just trying to show renders for people and uh, stuff. And uh, then we decided to push it a bit further, get into the VFX sides of things, so, which we'll get into uh, production. So you must be thinking uh, VFX in production. So... You must have heard of the phrase, uh, fix it in post, a lot, yeah. <laughs> so this is some scenarios where we had to fix it in post uh, uh, and how Blender helps us a lot with that. So there was a shoot once where we had a prop that was just missing. Like uh, someone didn't take into account, I guess, that we, the prop needed to be there. And uh, you know, there's a hassle on set and they're like, well, what do we do? Where's the bomb? Oh, bomb, sorry. There's supposed to be a bomb there, <laughs> okay? He's tied up to a bomb. And you are roaming around like, hey, where's the bomb? And you, I, maybe not the best idea to do when you're you know, in the street. <laughs> but uh, uh, so yeah, they, there was supposed to be a bomb there. And uh, so what I, what, what, do we, what, 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 what I did was uh, went and put the tracking markers, not knowing, OK, maybe I can do object tracking later. So, so this, this is like a rough drawing, like, OK, maybe I can put the bomb there. So yeah, you go to textures.com and you start pulling these things. <laughs> and you, you just put the wires, duplicate, and you know, do your object tracking. And, uh, and then there, you just put it there. And it looks, you match the lighting. And you can see there's this flashing lighting on them as if a police is next to them. Uh, so you just go ahead and do the same thing. You can see my painfully keyframed every frame of the light going up and down. <laughs> so, yeah. And then we have it. Uh, no worries. We fixed it. <laughs> so just show you a final shot. There you go. Got the bomb. No worries. I guess we didn't have to pay money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, this was another scenario, so the director wanted a wall here, and uh, the wall that was supposed to be here was a little far away, so what we did was we built this thing. Uh, wait, let's just come back up again. Yeah, so we had this wall that we were built, and uh, so, and then again, good old textures.com. <laughs> just go in and uh, make, make these cubes, uh, I guess uh, cuboids, and then uh, just go to, and then, you know, Images as planes, just projection map it, and uh, solve your camera, and there we have the wall. <laughs> uh, so it's a, sometimes it's like it's amazing what you can do, you know, uh, uh, with the tools these days. Uh, so here's another breakdown. So yeah, I throw in little garbage bags here and there, and there <laughs> we have the wall. <laughs> So yeah, this was about like, there was like 15 shots like this. Uh, I'm not going to show you all of that. So yeah. So a missing shot. So this happened during one of our productions where we completely omitted to take a shot. Uh, just, just, it was nobody, I don't know, somehow through the hierarchy, people just forgot that uh, a very important shot is missing. So let's just watch this here. So this kid, he's trying, to, he's trying to turn on a fan. He's too lazy to get out of the bed, and he's trying to turn on the fan by, you know, using a chit and a catapult. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, the, there's no sh the shot of it hitting the switch is not there. And that was the, one of the client's requests, like, hey, where's the shot of the chit hitting the 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 switch that's important to the story and uh, we're like oh yeah it is <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, yeah so the director comes to me and he's like hey 
I took this picture of the switch. Can you do something with it? I'm like, I don't even need the picture. It's fine. <laughs> so just went into Blender and uh, let it play there. And modeled this very simple, uh, just some cubes and circles and some mapping. And then you try to light it how it was lit in on set. You can see the uh, the blinds, uh, and you animate the chit flying and ch hitting the switch, and then those assets are from uh, Polyhaven. I bet I believe they're here today. Uh, so yeah, uh, really helpful. And this was done in a matter of minutes. Saved a lot of money on having to make a switch, lighting, and all that. So just show you the final. I'll just show you a breakdown. Yeah. Okay, and. Uh, so now we can complete the story. Done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. So now a missing location. <laughs> so <laughs> you see it's getting bigger and bigger, <laughs> the problems. So uh, we are, are obviously located in south of India, and we were trying to do a parody of The Exorcist. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have... I mean, everyone's seen this movie, right? Believe? Yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there's this iconic shot of the man standing in front of the haunted house. And, um, I will, I wish, I yeah, okay. The man standing in front of the haunted house. And uh, we want to recreate that. But as you know, it might be hard to find a western looking building in south of India. So what do we do when we want to make a one is to one parody? So. So I found this image online of the house uh, before they shot it, and I'm like, hey, let's, let's do the F-spy thing, okay? <laughs> so uh, we shot this plate uh, of a character walking in front, and someone had to painfully roto the parts where he's not on the green screen. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and he walks in front. Yeah, and uh, so now we have to turn this into the location. So here we have a model that uh, one of my colleagues grac graciously did. So a uh, couple of roads. And uh, we, uh, we started using these collection instances that are like, they're so great because you can edit. Uh, you can see here, you can edit the collection. And uh, yeah, uh, so, and it updates uh, on all the windows. But yeah, probably won't need it for need something weird like that. So so uh, you just start building out the scene. You you put in. Uh, you can see here it's textured with the object mapping. So this is great for brick because uh, it just nicely does the flow for you. You don't have to break your head with the UV unwrapping. Um, and we put the fence. And then uh, this, this great thing where uh, this IV, uh, which is a geometry node setup. And I, I love this thing because you can, uh, you can just draw uh, your curves on the wall and you can art direct the IV to go anywhere you want. And this is just fantastic. Uh, so there's a little geometry node setup there. Yeah. And then we move on to just adding more detail and uh, put some trees, and then you look up and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, that's just purely for our direction. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you move on to lighting from then. And uh, hold on. yeah. So the lighting for this is pretty simple because it's just a dark background. So I'm just going to turn on. It's like, OK, it's all black. And then yeah. And you're like, oh shit, well, where's the, why is it all like this? And then you put the volumetrics in. Um, I think I'm going to try doing that here. Yeah. yeah, and boom, instantly. <laughs> we are very close to, uh, you know, what the image looks like. And you add some more volumetrics with noise. And uh, you can see here, it's like a simple, uh, it's a simple uh, volume shader with noise attached to it. And you just make it move a little bit so that there's some dynamics. Yeah, and then the final step, uh, good old uh, images planes. 
just drop him in and this is great because uh, he'll interact with the fog, he'll interact with the lighting, he'll cast a shadow onto the floor, you don't have to worry about all that in post. So, and we knew it's gonna be exposed in a dark way, so, and we knew how the lighting's gonna look uh, beforehand, so we lit him appro appropriately. Yeah, and then there you go. Uh, we are very close there. And this is, this is absolutely scary because working on a scene like this late at night and all these denoising artifacts are starting to look like faces and you're like, oh no. <laughs> and then the file gets corrupted a few times and you're like, okay, I think I should <laughs> get this over with quickly. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous what you can get done. And I'll just show you the final shot here with a little bit of combusting. There you go. We have a location. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's how we got our location. <laughs> uh, so into the sky. So now we're going into post-production. I just want to show you some fun uh, things we do uh, with uh, our post work. Some things I believe only Blender can do, uh, let's just say. So we had this uh, uh, music video we did for the Amazon Prime a while back, uh, where this couple is flying through this imaginary world. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's supposed to be all cute and fluffy. And uh, the again, it's, uh, wait, let's get this. So this is how it looked before production. Uh, before post-production, sorry. So, yeah, again, uh, key it out, put it as image as planes, and this is where, I guess, Blender shines, because with EV, you can have the bloom, the depth of field, uh, everything you need uh, instantly, and, uh, you know, you, uh, like, we were gonna do this initially in a traditional combusting software, and I'm, I just realized, hey, I have to put uh, depth of field for this, I have to put depth of field for that, I have to put glow for this, and I'm like, why bother? I'll just drop it into EV. It'll just do all the magic for me, make it look good, especially with short timelines. So, uh, and then you get the music video. So, yeah. And uh, finally, uh, to the moon. <laughs> so, uh, we had a project recently where we had to make the surface of the moon where two guys will be dancing. And uh, so, at this point, we have become very familiar with Blender. We know what Blender can do. And, uh, we are like, okay, let's just make this small surface that people can stand on and dance, and then we'll blend it with a CG background. So uh, this is how it looked before shooting. Um, moving on. And uh, so I guess this is where the Blender community is so great because you can do something as simple as how to make a moon in Blender. And, and the, the key is not to, get, not, not to know the tutorial for that. The key is that you might get assets from them. You might get some nice friend who will just post it, like, you know, hey, here's a free 16K displacement map. And like, thank you. I, I guess his uh, name is Mantisa. I believe he's here too today. Uh, 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 maybe I'm getting that wrong, but uh, yeah, uh, these nice displacement maps from uh, uh, him that are like moon-based. So you can see, uh, we have, we, at least from the camera point of view, it looks like the surface of the moon. Um, so moving on. So, and then we composite that surface that we rendered. And uh, scale it down. And then, then you have to do the hard work of combusting it in, <laughs> which, uh, and then you get a pretty convincing guy is dancing on a moon for the mu music video. So yeah, uh, I mean, that is, that's it. So that's, uh, that's all the stuff we do in Blender. Uh, so from pre to post, I'd just like to leave you with this <laughs> because I believe every filmmaker should maybe try getting into Blender because you don't know when it might help. It, it, it just will. <laughs> so I'll just end, it, end this off with a reel uh, so you guys can just see the work we do in Blender. 90% of it is in Blender, some in other softwares. So just check it out. Wait, do we have audio? So, uh, okay, let me check.
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Uh, hope you guys could take something away from it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask now. Or if you want to talk to me later, I'm, I'm, I'll be here for three days. So, yeah. yeah yes. Uh, no, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm waiting for the viewport compositor. I think that'll be a game changer. Yes. Uh, this all, uh, Fusion, Fusion, yeah, yeah. Uh, it used to be After Effects, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Fusion is better, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Yes. How do you handle color space? Color space. Uh, I saw what some of those you were. Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, like, uh, it's a little daunting uh, <laughs> to be fair, but uh, I think right now we're using Aces and. Uh, uh, I think uh, we have a custom three to three matrices. I I really don't know. <laughs> I think my colorist helps me with that. But uh, he uh, converts it uh, uh, from the aces, whatever I render, to what the DI needs. So, uh, so yeah, I think we uh, take it into Fusion and uh, we use the color space transforms uh, to transform it to what we need. Yeah, basically, yeah. So, yeah. anyone? Yes. No, right now we've been only using cycles. Uh, we do use Unreal sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, some of the stuff you saw Unreal. Uh, uh, usually our timelines are like really, really small, so uh, we try to stick to EV uh, and uh, Unreal when the time comes. But uh, cycles is getting so fast these days that <laughs> it's also becoming very viable to use that. So yeah, is that all? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, not yet, not yet. But the hope is that we can. Uh, the infrastructure is kind of poor where we are from uh, in terms of virtual production. Uh, but we are trying to uh, we are trying to get there. We are trying to build something that you know we can use because we do have we do have the what do you say? We do have the each individual tool. We have the displays. We have the computers. We have we have everything that needs. But we need someone to bring it together. So I think that is a little lacking. So we are trying to bridge in that gap uh, from our end. But uh, it's the talks have been a little vague, to say the least. Yeah. Anyone? Okay, I, I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>